Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Yuli, uh, research scientist here at QK and Pleasanton. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce our uh, speaker, Maristella, Dr. Maristella Alessio. Uh, Maristella received her master's degree in chemistry from University of Torino, uh, working in the crystal group on the development of DFT dispersion methods for solids. For her PhD, he moved to uh, German, where he worked in Professor uh, Joachim Sauer Group uh, at the Humboldt uh, University of Berlin. Her doctoral thesis focused on developing onion like embedding schemes for accuracy, accurately describing reaction steps and heterogenesis catalysis. He is currently a postdoctoral scholar in Professor Anna Kralov's group at University of Southern California. Within her postdoctoral project, uh, he developed, developed a set of theoretical tools for predicting the magnetic behavior of molecular uh, magnet. Uh, she is interested in building a new quantum chemistry methods to investigate uh, strong correlated materials and complex chemical phenomena. Um, I would encourage you to submit your questions during the talk and I will relay them to the speaker at the end of the talk. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Maristella. Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I hope you can see my screen. And hear me well yeah okay okay so okay for today i will be talking about our new developments for computing macroscopic magnetic properties in a single molecule magnets starting from equation of motion couple cluster calculations in today's talk i will first introduce introduce our computational protocol which is implemented uh, within the easy magnet software then I will illustrate the capabilities of our scheme by applications on a set of ion compounds. And uh, I will make use of these uh, case studies to illustrate how we provide an interpretation of the computed quantities in terms of orbitals. And this orbital picture is directly extracted from the many body weight function. So to begin, which are the motivations and which are the challenges of this work? Well, single molecule magnets are often transition metal complexes with a certain number of unpaired electrons. And for such systems, the energy level with plus S and minus S spin projections, where S here is the spin quantum number of the ground state multiplet, well, these energy levels are the lowest in energy and the generate, with an energy barrier here shown in red for spin inversion. Then these molecules are also examples of two-level system, and for this reason, this can be used as molecular spin qubits for the development of molecule-based quantum devices. The use of this molecule for such purpose is particularly convenient because molecules show high chemical tunability, then these molecule can, molecules can also be organized into multi-qubit systems or qubit arrays. However, um, their low operating temperature still prevents the application of this molecule into for the for the for building up a real quantum device and this leads to the main goals of this work our main goal is to develop theoretical tools for predicting the magnetic behavior of these molecules which will then help the design of improved nanomagnets however theory to be useful for such uh, reason um, as to first provide uh, uh, electronic structure methods capable of dealing with the multi configurational weight function of these systems. Then, if we want to describe spin related properties, we need also to account for relativistic effects like spin orbit coupling and the interaction with an applied magnetic field. Furthermore, theory should be able to provide not only physical observables but also insights. And uh, we try, we, we um, target these challenges and developed a new computational approach for 
describing the magnetic behavior of transition metal single molecule magnets within the equation of motion Kappa cluster uh, framework. Okay, before moving into the description of our approach, let me say a few words uh, describing fundamental um, concept in molecular magnetism. The easiest possible situation is the one of a molecular paramagnet in which the ground state has a zero angular momentum and a large energy separation with respect to the first excited state. In such situation, any spin orbit coupling between the ground state and the um, excited state might be negligible. If then the, the magnetic field, the external magnetic field is zero, the 2s plus 1 magnetic sublevels of, um, uh, of the spin ground state will be degenerate. When instead a magnetic field is applied and provided that the ratio of the magnetic field uh, over kt is small, where k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature, well, in such a condition, the susceptibility chi will be described and will follow the Curie law, which describes the isotropic magnetic behavior of a paramagnet. If we look at the Curie law and uh, rearrange it slightly, where n is the Avogadro number and the product of the Avogadro number uh, for the Bohr magneton constant over three times the Boltzmann constant, where this product is, this ratio is about one over eight, allow us to um, rearrange this expression of the Curie law and to compute the values of the product of the susceptibility chi times the temperature from the spin quantum number only. So these values are tabulated at the bottom right, right of, the, of the slide and are practically, uh, for, mm, are practically temperature independent and constant values. In the case instead of single molecule magnets, um, the ground state is typically a non-zero angular momentum and this is a result of two uh, essential aspects. First, the kind of splitting and degeneracy pattern due to the crystal field strength and symmetry. And second, uh, this non-zero angular momentum is the result of a specific number of unpaired electrons filling the, the orbitals in the case of transition uh, metal uh, molecules. The non-zero angular, angular momentum is then at the origin of a uh, large spin orbit coupling, that is the coupling between the spin and the uh, orbit angular momentum and also of a large zero field splitting, that is the splitting of these magnetic sublevels with different spin projection of the, of the electronic states. And um, these two features are, are the reason of the energy barrier we have seen in the figure before, uh, shown in red, for spin inversion. Um, under such circumstances, the uh, magnetic behavior of these systems is anisotropic. Here we have an example, this is a molecule of cobalt 2, this system has been investigated by the long group at Berkeley University. Uh, the, linear, the, the coordination environment of this molecule is linear. We have a not number of unpaired electrons, which are distributed in a non aufbau uh, configuration, which leads to a large angular momentum. If we look at the um, susceptibility spectrum uh, for this system, this uh, um, plot, this plot reports the susceptibility times the temperature versus the temperature. Here the susceptibility is more an average quantity because experiments are um, often measured, uh, provide, performed on uh, powder samples. Well, we observe that this behavior of the susceptibility deviates significantly from the expected uh, behavior of the Curie law. We have a significant deviation in the low temperature regime. If we follow the black curve, we observe that this is not linear and um, we also have a, a deviation in the high temperature regimes because the product of the susceptibility times the temperature is much higher than the expected value for a system that has a spin-only magnetic behavior and that follows the Curie law. So this will be a uh, main subject of the focus. This kind of behavior will be main subject of, um, of the present talk. Okay, um, I will now say a few more words connecting the uh, research area of single molecule magnets with the one of molecular spin qubits. Well, uh, as we said, single molecular magnets are ex uh, characterized by a certain magnetic anisotropy and also by this energy barrier for spin inversion. 
which leads to a well-known phenomenon, the slow relaxation of the magnetization. This means that when uh, we have a certain uh, non-zero magnetic field, the net magnetic moment of the system, that is our magnetization, will orient along a preferential direction that is typically called uh, easy, magnet, um, easy axis. And once then the field will be removed, this magnetization will be retained for a certain time. And this is because the excited spin have to overcome an energy barrier before to relax back to the, their original situation. And this thing relaxation time is often called tau and measured uh, typically from excessivity experiments. Then the concept of single molecule magnets is often associated with the one of qubits, as I said, uh, because these are examples of two-level systems. And when we are dealing with qubits, our um, biggest challenge is to achieve long enough coherence lifetimes. And coherence, uh, the coherence lifetime is the lifetime of the superposition between two, uh, two of, these avail of the available electronic levels. And for such a particular system, um, we have two parameters of, of interest uh, that are also relaxation times, but in this case, these are measured from EPR experiments. The first one is the spin lattice C1 relaxation time, and this is an equivalent concept to tau, but uh, they may differ uh, due to the different experimental uh, measurements. This spin uh, lattice relaxation time, the name says it by its own, uh, it depends on the interaction of the spin magnetic centers with the vibration of the, of the molecular system. And th for this reason, it is typically temperature dependent. The second parameter instead is T2 and is the real uh, coherence lifetime. It depends on the interaction between the spin magnetic centers. It is typically smaller than T1. And uh, in order to, to make the qubit useful for practical implementation of quantum device, T2 has to be larger than the quantum gate operation time. So typically larger than a few hundreds of microseconds. And uh, recently, the group of Friedman at MIT has synthesized and characterized a compound of uh, vanadium-4, here uh, shown in purple, um, which has shown um, record values for the G2 uh, relaxation time of about one millisecond at 10 Kelvin. And these values are um, quite comparable with the ones typically measured for point defects in solids. And this has been possible by um, dilution of the compound in a solvent that has uh, um, that is uh, nuclear spin free and by using also nuclear spin free ligands. Okay. When we are uh, working with single molecular molecule magnets, we are interested in achieving longer spin relaxation times. And this can be done by, for example, enhancing the energy separation between the electronic states or by enhancing the magnetic anisotropy. This magnetic anisotropy is typically quantified by the parameter D uh, that is directly related to the size of this energy barrier U. And we also need to uh, minimize the vibronic coupling by carefully tuning the molecular vibrations. In the world, instead of uh, qubits, of molecular spin qubits, we are interested in achieving longer coherence lifetimes. And to do so, we typically need to um, to um, suppress all the um, decoherence mechanism, which depend on the electron-electron interactions or on the nuclear uh, electron interactions. And uh, as we already mentioned, this can be done by dilution of the compound in a diamagnetic matrix or by using nuclear spin-free ligands and solvents. Understanding how to control T1 by enhancing the magnetic anisotropy is the main uh, focus of this present work. And controlling T1 is important not only for uh, having a better control over the electronic states and their distribution, but also uh, to preserve long enough T2, so coherence lifetimes, when the operating temperature has to be higher. Because in that case, T2, T1 will be significantly smaller and it will become the limiting factor of uh, our um, coherence uh, process. Okay, 
Now that I introduced some of the fundamental aspects for, for this topic, um, I will give a general overview of the computational approach implemented in EasyMagnet. Our scheme is uh, implemented with a Python script uh, that is a post-processing tool and has to be run after the uh, main electronic structure calculation. It reads raw data from the in this case, the QCAM output, and this raw data are the equation of motion capital cluster energies, the angular momentum, and spin orbit matrix elements between the equation of motion uh, capital cluster eigenstates. And then computes macroscopic properties, magnetization, and susceptibility at a given temperature and applied magnetic field. Well, first we need to perform, we need to compute zero order non relativistic eigenstates from the equation of motion capital cluster calculation. Second, we include relativistic, relativistic terms by adding a spin orbit operator and a Zeeman operator to the born oppenheimer zero order uh, Hamiltonian and uh, compute matrix elements of this perturbed Hamiltonian in the basis of the equation of motion of a cluster eigenstates. Then diagonalization of this Hamiltonian provides perturbed eigenstates and energies. And the, the, the energy, the perturbed energies are used to compute the partition function and magnetization and susceptibility are directly related to, to the differentiation of this uh, uh, partition function with respect to the field. Then our aim is, first of all, to compare with experimental available um, susceptibility and magnetization uh, measurements. And since these experiments are often performed on powder sample, what we do is always computing average quantities um, that resemble the behavior of a, uh, of a powder compound. OK. I will now say a few words related to the electronic structure method that we adopted. So uh, due to the presence of uh, um, near orbital degeneracy and uh, a certain number of unpaired electrons, uh, the initial description of these systems is challenging due to the uh, resulting multi-configurational wave function. And to describe the target states of interest, we rely on the equation of motion capital cluster approach in which the target states are obtained by excitation where r here is the linear excitation operator uh, starting from a reference state that is, is instead well described by the um, capital cluster uh, expansion of the wave function then diagonalization of the similarity transformed hamiltonian provide the provides the target state of interest by combining different types of excitation operator and um, reference states, as shown here in the figure, different kinds of target states can be um, can, can, are available practically. Uh, but it's also of interest the different combination of this approach with uh, different models treating the electronic correlation, uh, which leads to a hierarchy of, uh, of methods. And for our particular purpose is of interest the combination of the spin flip approach with time-dependent DFT or with RCI for the study of larger systems with a larger number of uh, unpaired electrons. In this particular, in this work, we investigated four different ion compounds, iron one, iron two, and iron three. Complex one here is a, is a iron two molecule in a trigonal pyramidal uh, coordination environment. Iron two, the complex two and complex three instead are iron one, iron two, and iron one respectively in a linear uh, coordination. And complex four is a, a molecule of iron three in a trigonal bipyramidal uh, coordination. Okay. Um, the first slide here shows the electron structure of the um, iron two compounds. On the right side, we have the linear iron two molecule results. And on the left one, uh, we have the electronic states of the trigonal uh, pyramidal iron two molecule. We computed five different target states by attaching a beta electron shown here in red to one of the molecular orbitals of a um, high spin D5 uh, reference. And we obtain D6 electronic configuration. These are all quinted uh, states. 
the um, energies of these uh, electronic states are reported in the tables at the bottom of the slide. We always obtain an average generate ground state, uh, then a first excited quintet state, and then higher in energy another uh, W generate um, quintet excited state. For the linear iron one compound, we also obtain target states. In this case, we have quartet target states with a D7 electronic configuration. And we obtain again uh, these target states by attaching a beta electron, this time starting from a D7, D6 uh, electronic configuration of a, of a high spin electronic configuration of a reference. Uh, on the contrary, for the iron two trigonal bipyramidal compound, Target states are obtained by spin flip excitation, uh, starting from a high spin D5 uh, electronic configuration. For all those systems, uh, the, the generative pattern of the D orbitals leads always to a double degenerate ground state, um, as, uh, as we can see also from the table, uh, from the tables at the bottom of the slide for these last two compounds. Okay. However, uh, the, the, the description, um, so independently from the chosen uh, electronic structure methods, the electronic Hamiltonian does not include uh, relativistic effects. And to account for uh, relativistic effects, we rely on a, a state um, interaction scheme, which consists of two different steps. We first compute the um, zero order non relativistic eigenstates, as I described, by relying on the equation of motion capital cluster approach. Second, we um, build up a perturbed Hamiltonian, including spin orbit and Zeeman terms, and compute matrix elements of this Hamiltonian in the basis of these um, non relativistic eigenstates. As a spin orbit operator, uh, so a spin orbit operator treating the inter the coupling between the spin and the orbital angular uh, momentum in the presence of the uh, potential of the nuclei, we use the bright Pauli Hamiltonian, and uh, the implementation of matrix elements of this Hamiltonian uh, is uh, is been done by Pokilko and Kailov and is available within the QCAM software. This, uh, this operator contains two different terms, one electron part in red and two electron part in uh, blue, uh, where R and pi and P are the coordinate and momentum operator of the electrons, and uh, capital Z and capital R are the charges and uh, coordinates of the, of the nuclei. On the contrary, the interactions with an applied magnetic field are described by the Zeeman operator, and here, the calculation of the matrix elements um, of this operator reduces to compute matrix elements of the spin uh, and of the uh, orbital angular momentum operator, where here H is the, is the height field, is the magnetic field. Okay, here we have an example for the um, trigonal pyramidal ion 2 molecule, the spin orbit coupling splits the double degenerate uh, quintet ground state that is shown here in red into two by two degenerate magnetic sublevels. And from this spin orbit splitting shown in dark blue, one can extract the energy barrier for spin inversion, uh, U, and directly relate with experimental data if available. This was the case for this compound, the experimental energy barrier um, is uh, computed by the product of the spin times the uh, parameter D that quantifies the magnetic anisotropy. This parameter D is typically, in this, in this case, is extracted um, from susceptibility measurement by fitting to a spin Hamiltonian. Then um, the additional interaction with an applied magnetic field that uh, will, will uh, remove this to fold degeneracy, and this is shown here in light blue. Um, this, this picture of the spin orbit coupling shows that the greater is the spin orbit coupling and the corresponding magnetic anisotropy quantified by D, and the higher will be the energy barrier for spin inversion. Okay, once we have um, diagonalized our perturbed Hamiltonian and computed uh, eigenstates and energies, that are corrected for the spin orbit uh, um, and the Zeeman interaction. How do we compute our macroscopic properties? 
Well, let's start from the definition of the magnetization. The magnetization M is defined as first order derivative of the energy of the system with respect to the applied field, while the susceptibility chi is the first derivative of the magnetization with respect to the applied field. Then if we follow Boltzmann uh, distribution law, the magnetization can be also defined as a sum of uh, over all the energy levels of the energy derivatives of each energy level with respect to the field, where each term is here weighted by the Boltzmann factor. Then by taking derivatives of the resulting partition function computed, uh, these are computed uh, numerically, we also derive working equation for computing the magnetization and, um, and also susceptibility. As I already mentioned at the beginning, uh, the real quantities of interest are the average one in order to compare with experimental uh, data. And uh, our powder average averaging is done by numerical integration over um, the surface of a unit sphere. This numerical integration can be approximated with a sum of uh, weighted function values, where each function values if each, each function value is evaluated for a specific pair of uh, polar angles that indicates the direction or a certain direction of the field over the sphere. This uh, pair of polar angles and these uh, uh, corresponding weighting factors are provided by the repulsion scheme. And uh, here in the figure, I plotted the uh, weighting factors for 150 integration points. Those values are all within a small, very short um, um, range. And, uh, and this shows that repulsion scheme provides a, a uniform set of uh, field orientation over the, over the sphere, which allows um, uh, efficient uh, powder averaging, efficient numerical integration. Okay. However, theory not only provides um, ways of computing properties and numbers and physical observables, but also tools for interpreting the computed quantities uh, in terms of orbitals. For many body theories, our um, and within the expectation value formalism, if we consider a certain one electron operator um, that describes one electron property, and this is the operator A, the corresponding um, uh, expectation value it can be uh, expressed as a sum, as a contraction of the um, integrals, corresponding integrals, uh, with the density, with the transition density matrix, uh, gamma, where here F is the final state and I stands for initial state. And uh, P dagger and Q are the creation and annihilation operator corresponding to the uh, P and Q spin orbitals. Then, um, while the computed quantities, the expectation uh, value, uh, are uh, orbital invariants, the density is not. So, what is typically done is um, to perform a singular value decomposition of gamma, which provides a compact uh, representation of the transition density matrix, and also a unique set of uh, orbitals, which are not depending on the basis and on the quantum mechanical method uh, adopted. This set of orbitals contains whole and particle natural transition orbitals. And in the, in the basis of these NTOs, the um, expected, uh, uh, so the, the expectation value for the one electron operator A uh, between uh, a final and an initial, initial state can be computed as a sum of matrix elements between um, NTO pairs, whole and particles, uh, and each of these each term here is weighted by the by the corresponding singular value. Then uh, often only a few of uh, these uh, singular values are um, large and non-zero, uh, and this leads us to describe to be so these allow us to describe the computed quantities in terms of only a few NTO pairs. So it allows us to give uh, an interpretation in terms of an easy orbital picture um, of the computed properties. If we go back to our um, case studies of um, based on four different iron compounds, 
the electronic states of the iron compounds can be described in terms can be described in terms of orbitals. And if we look at the electronic transition between the spin orbit coupled states one and two, this is described by only one leading NTO pair, meaning that only one of those singular values will be uh, non-zero. And for, for example, for the, let's look at them, for the trigonal pyramidal and for the uh, iron two and for the trigonal bipyramidal iron three molecule, we have that this NTO pair involves the uh, DYZ and DXZ orbital types. Then instead, for the linear compounds, um, this NTO pair uh, is described by uh, nearly perfect the uh, X square, Y square, and the X, Y orbitals. Well, we can anticipate that the different character of this leading NTO pair, that is also the one contributing to the overall spin orbit coupling and uh, transition angular momentum. Well, this leading NTO pair has a different nature and this uh, will lead to a different uh, magnetic behavior for these compounds that we will see in a few slides. But before, I would like to give some instruction for the people here interested in uh, uh, using these features and uh, interested in running Easy Magnet. Well, to run Easy Magnet, we need per three different input files. The first one is typically created manually, but one can follow the examples provided um, on our web page. And um, this first input file contains a set of keywords that specify which kind of magnetic property to compute, for how many multiplets, uh, at which temperature and magnetic field values. And um, here I cut out an example uh, for the um, trigonal pyramidal iron two molecule. Uh, we are, for example, interested in computing the magnetization vector uh, for the double degenerate ground state um, that is acquainted. And uh, we want to compute the magnetization for 20 different uh, magnetic field strengths, evenly distributed between one and seven Tesla. And uh, for 40 different uh, temperature values between five and 300 Kelvin. And this last keyword is that H direction uh, shows what's the direction of the applied magnetic field, in this case along the Z axis. Then, if we want to compute uh, average quantities, we uh, need a, an additional file that doesn't need to be modified by the, by the user and contains 150 integration points as provided by, by the repulsion scheme. The third file uh, can be created manually, but I recommend to use a script, it's much easier. And um, it contains spin, angular momentum, and spin orbit uh, coupling matrix elements between the, um, the target states. And uh, um, the calculation of spin matrix elements is quite trivial once we know what's the spin, a quantum number of each multiplet, while the angular momentum and spin orbit couplings are extracted from the output of QChem and computed within the uh, density matrix formalism I shortly introduced a uh, few slides uh, ago before. Here we have an example for the uh, trigonal bipyramidal iron 3 molecule. Uh, if we look at the electronic transition between the, the, the degenerate states 1 and 2, this is described by the NTO pair um, involving the XZ and the YZ orbitals. Corresponding LZ component of the transition angular momentum will be non-zero and about 1. And uh, this also leads to pretty large spin orbit coupling matrix elements between the magnetic sublevels of the two quartet uh, states. Okay. Um, let's now summarize which kind of information, in, in which kind of information um, are provided, uh, which kind of inf information is provided in the in the output. Well, first of all, we can extract from the perturbed Hamiltonian and um, after diagonalization the, the 
the script provides eigenstates and uh, eigenvalues. So from the eigenvalues, we can extract the energy barrier for spin inversion, which is directly related to the uh, size of the magnetic anisotropy for the system. Then the real core of the output contains magnetization and susceptibility values for different temperature and magnetic fields. Here, for example, I, I, I report a cutout of output that prints the magnetization average values for a fixed field, um, sorry, for a fixed uh, temperature, uh, 1.8 Kelvin, and for a magnetic field that is changing uh, from one Tesla to seven Tesla. And um, another thing I would like to say is that since um, we are describing um, systems that have an anisotropic magnetic behavior, the magnetization is, a, is typically a vector and uh, the susceptibility is a second uh, order tensor. So what we do, what the code, what the script does is diagonalizing the, uh, the second order tensor susceptibility and getting uh, main susceptibility values and corresponding eigenvectors that are called main magnetic axis. And this, uh, for example, for the trigonal pyramidal iron two molecule, these are shown here in blue and yellow in the figure. Okay, so if you are interested in using easy magnets, this is a, a is, is available uh, for downloading uh, at our webpage together with a manual and uh, a few examples. Okay, in the last slides, in the last part of the talk, I will uh, compare the, the results obtained for um, uh, two different iron compounds. I selected the iron two systems for simplicity because they um, um, have different leading and TO pair and um, they have a different coordination environment. Okay, so we computed uh, the magnetization for a magnetic field H oriented parallel and perpendicular to the C3 rotational axis. And uh, we also computed average quantities. The results for the trigonal pyramidal iron 2 molecule are here on the left, while for, on the right we have the results for the linear molecule. Our calculated curves are the black ones, and uh, we can observe that these curves are in excellent agreement with uh, previous results obtained from starting, obtained, these results were obtained uh, uh, by Nese and co-workers starting from net 52 energies. And these are the blue, yellow, and green curves. Then we can also observe that our average quantities um, are, agree well, agree, uh, agree well with the experimental curves that are shown here in, in, uh, in red. Okay, we also uh, computed susceptibility main values by diagonalization of the corresponding tensor, as I mentioned before. And these the curves are the blue, and the, so their temperature dependence uh, are, are reported here in blue and yellow. It is important to, to observe that we were not able to obtain similar temperature dependence by uh, using approximated expression of the susceptibility like the Van Vleck one. But let us focus on the green curve. These are the average quantities, which agree well uh, with the experimental curves in red, and also with the available uh, theoretical curves of curve obtained by Nesen co-workers starting again from NFT to energy. Okay, so for both systems, we can observe that in the low temperature regime, we have a certain deviation from linearity, and this is uh, indicative of a spin orbit coupling and of a magnetic uh, anisotropy in both systems. But only for the linear iron 2 compound, we observe a certain deviation of the susceptibility times the temperature uh, from the Curie law, even in the high temperature regime. And this is probably uh, due to a much larger orbital angular momentum contributing to the magnetic behavior of the linear I2 molecule, then the contribution of, from the angular momentum for the other compound. Okay, um, we complement this kind of uh, study by um, uh, orbital analysis in terms of NT using a, the NTO picture I showed you before, which allow us to explain why large spin orbit coupling are expected between states that have different orientation of the orbitals, which is typical, which is a qualitative rule uh, named L-side rule. 
Okay, let's start. Let's, for example, look at the linear iron 2 uh, case. Uh, I already said that the uh, NTO pair, the only NTO pair describing the electronic transition between state that generates uh, state 1 and 2 um, is between dx square y square and dx y orbitals. Then the corresponding spin orbit coupling that is computed as a sum of matrix elements between NTO. Um, is also proportional to the orbital angular momentum based on its um, expression. And if we look at the orbital angular momentum matrix representation uh, of its operator, uh, this is um, in the basis of spherical harmonics, um, we observe that non-zero angular momentum and therefore large spin orbit coupling is expected only between states that have different um, orbital orientation which explains, explains in a quantitative way uh, not only the L side rules, but also why, um, the reason why for the linear iron to compound based on the nature of the NTO uh, pair, we have a large uh, angular momentum of about two imaginary number, and also a large spin orbit coupling, a large energy barrier, and as we observed in the um, slide before, a significant deviation from the Curie law, even at higher temperature. Okay, in the last slide, I try to compare and summarize this concept, um, uh, taking the all four compounds of interest. Here I show for the transition between states one and two, the angular momentum, um, transition angular momentum, and the spin orbit coupling uh, matrix elements. Um, what we can see is that for the, comp for the linear compounds, uh, the complex two and complex three, the leading NTO pair uh, gives uh, is responsible of a uh, angular momentum that is two imaginary number, and um, this is uh, uh, the reason of a uh, spin orbit coupling that is twice as large the values computed for complex one and complex four, and we can uh, describe it based on the nature of the leading NTO pair, and this is also the reason why the experimental measured uh, energy barrier for spin inversion of complex two and complex three is significantly larger than the values uh, reported for complex one and complex four. Okay, so in the summary, um, today I show you um, how to use and, uh, um, the theoretical framework uh, within, uh, behind the Easy Magnet software. Uh, that is a tool for computing the magnetic behavior of, uh, of transition uh, metal single molecule magnets. From the results on a set of iron compounds, um, I been able to show you that uh, this specific tool provides an accurate uh, description of the, the magnetic behavior. Then theory also provided provides tool for uh, interpreting the results in terms of orbitals and to describe trends in their magnetic behavior and um, energy barrier heights. From the results of this study, um, we, can so we can confirm that the, the design rule, rule that linear iron two and iron one single molecule magnets are the best performing um, molecular magnets among the ones considered. And as conclusive remark, we can say that our approach does not, um, so that, first of all, provides a direct comparison with experiments without relying on uh, spin Hamiltonian formalism or on uh, approximation of the susceptibility like the pamphlet one. Then it can be applied uh, at any temperature and uh, magnetic field. And it's pretty general because it can be combined with any other electronic structure method providing um, orbital angular momentum and spin orbit coupling uh, matrix elements. And it might also be extended to the use of spin flip time dependent DFT or CI for the study of uh, multi nuclear systems with uh, multiple uh, unpaired electrons. Okay, um, one of our uh, one of the extension of this work is the study of exchange interaction, um, the calculation of exchange interaction with nuclear ion compounds starting from spin flip 
um, calculation. It's currently available within uh, the EasyMagnet software as well. This protocol has been initially presented by Mayol and Ed Gordon a few years ago. Uh, we uh, have, um, extracted these J couplings for a set of iron compounds uh, and uh, validated the um, high temperature model uh, based on the analysis of the natural orbitals of the most relevant uh, electronic states. Uh, tuning exchange uh, couplings in such systems is important uh, because it allows to enhance the energy separation between the electronic states and eventually avoid the thermal excitation that may um, accelerate the relaxation of the magnetization. Uh, but by using the tools I, I show you today, um, is it possible? It, it is possible to investigate a large uh, range of uh, molecules. For example, this is the case of uh, the study of a nickelocene molecule, that is a metallocene of nickel, and this molecule is largely uh, used as a spin prop molecule. What does that mean? It means that when anchored to a um, metallic tip of a SPM uh, arrangement, it can be used to investigate additional unknown magnetic units that can be deposited on a surface. And our interest here was to, first of all, describe electronic structure of the system and um, verifying what's the origin of the magnetic behavior of this molecule, and also uh, investigate the robustness of uh, its magnetic properties. We started by analyzing the molecule in the gas phase and have been able to uh, correlate the spin orbit coupling matrix elements between the states of interest with the magnet macroscopic magnetic behavior of the system. Then we verified that by substitution of the five member ring, uh, magnetic properties and electronic structures are attained. And we have also been able to uh, um, investigate the absorption complex of, complex of the molecule on a model surface, surface. And from our calculation, uh, we have been able to see that the orbital picture uh, of the electronic states is unchanged. However, the spin orbit coupling calculation for such cluster models are not practical within the equation of motion hybrid cluster approach. So we could not compute magnetic properties. This leads uh, to further um, developments of the theory, so it would be uh, of interest to combine spin orbit coupling with spin flip time dependent EFT or using additional scheme like the density embedding ones. And currently, people are working in, uh, in, a, in both directions. Okay, so finally, I would like to thank my PI and uh, the collaborators at the University of Southern California. And if some of you have questions, I would be happy to take them. Thank you, Maristella. Uh, this is really a uh, very yes. informative uh, talk. Uh, our first question, um, does the Easy Magnet only support uh, Linux systems? Or Which if he has, uh, does it only support the Linux system? I mean, uh, iron, iron system? Only iron systems is the question? No, the Linux system, the, the operating yeah. system. Uh, um, Does well, it work uh, on Windows? Does it work on Windows? Uh, no, no, no. Well, it's a script. Uh, it doesn't have an interface. So, yes, you have to be able to run the script with a Python uh, command. I see. Yeah, uh, so it doesn't have any graphical interface. Uh, so you will need a terminal, so you will need, uh, you can use it with Windows as well. Uh, you just need um, an interface for, uh, for uh, running uh, commands on a shell on the terminal. Thank you. Um, the, so the second, second question is, does it, does the easy magnet uh, take the takes the Q can output directly, or we need to construct the some kind of input for the easy magnet. Okay, so um, well, the only input you have to construct is the one in which you say which property you need to compute: magnetization, sensitivity, uh, the average quantities, 
at which temperature and magnetic field values and how many states you want to include in your calculation. So it's important always to verify the convergence of your results with respect to the states. Um, so, uh, but all other information are extracted by, 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 the, by the script. So you need to be in the same directory with your output and with your input file and uh, run the available scripts. Okay. And they will read the information from the output. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so I think it's a related question. Another one is a related question. Uh, does it work with the uh, spin flip TDDFT? I'm sorry, spin flip DFT now, or is on, right now it's only work with the yeah. so it CC. works. With, it works with the, any method providing uh, spin orbit couplings and the um, transition angular momentum uh, because the spin matrix are are tabulated, so can be computed once you know the script computes them once they when, once you tell them what's. I mean, you don't need to tell them. No. Do not, have, do not have to say the, the spin quantum number because it's known. So the only thing you need is the spin orbit coupling. And uh, right now um, uh, we are working with the with the implementation of the spin orbit coupling together with spin flip time dependent DFT. The, there are no technical limitations in that. It was not just available, but it is almost there. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So it will be easily available. Right now, what you can do is using a question of motion cap cluster with MP2 or with or with cap cluster. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, looks like we don't have more questions. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna okay. move to close this webinar, and I would like to uh, thank uh, Maristella again for. Thank for you, the you. wonderful talk and thank you uh, the attendee for the listening and if you have more questions later uh, or you're watching this oh, video sorry. through uh, YouTube uh, feel free to send me an email and or post a uh, question on the our talk forum um, this will conclude our webinar thank okay. you everyone.